Have you heard the saying, nothing new is actually new? It is most often used in fashion or music, but it's also the perfect fit for football. And in this video, I'm going to show you how some old ideas are used to revolutionize the modern game. Let's board the game with the three-man defense. You're watching Board the Game. I'm Nick. I'm still getting so confused when I hear many football fans saying, oh, my favorite team is playing with a three-man defense. I don't like defensive football. Well, it's not a necessity for a team with three at the back to be relying mainly on defense. In fact, if we take the standard but essential 4-4-2 formation in football, when you switch it to 3-5-2 and it's easy to do it, you're actually taking a man from the back line and putting him in a more advanced position. It seems like a progressive move. And there are many teams in the history of football which played exciting, successful and attacking football still with a defensive line of three. But I know from where the confusion comes. Many are calling this system 5-3-2. And of course, there are quite a few interpretations of this positioning of the players. And it's definitely a 5-3-2 if these two wingbacks are conservative and rarely break forwards and the three central defenders are keeping their positions even in the attacking phase. And I assume that many of you have heard, know or even remember the famous Catenaccio Italian system, which was based heavily on defensive football and counter-attacking with long balls. And it was used in times in which the three-man defense was still popular. And that's another reason for the perception of defensive football with a three-man defense. But if these two players here have their responsibilities in attack, if they don't have a devoted winger in front of them and need to be the main creative force on the wings, then we are talking about an attacking 3-5-2, maybe even 3-4-1-2 or 3-4-3. And then only in the defensive phase we can still see the line of five but it's not every time supported from only a three-man midfield because many coaches prefer to use one of the two designated forwards defending on the flank for a 5-4-1 formation in defense. I will show you examples of teams which are using the three-man defense in a different way just in a minute. But first, to understand the present and to be ready for the future, we need to know the past. Going back to the 30s or the 40s in the past century, when football was expanding lightning fast in every corner of the world, the most common formation used was 2-3-5, and these two players here were called fullbacks. Stay with me. Several years later, in search of balance, many coaches started dropping one of the central midfielders in the defensive line. Then the so-called fullbacks started playing closer to the wings, even hugging the touchline and even helping both ways. And now, over 50-60 years later, this approach is making many fans scratch their heads and wonder what's going on, how a centre-back, as we call them today, is possible to play in attack. Well, it's quite possible because of the modern hybrid formations and changing the basic one in transition. When a certain team plays in a 5-3-2 formation in defence, and let me just set it up, we need three midfielders here, and the team starts building an attack, the wingers are coming here and then these two defenders are moving out wide. When one of them joins the attack, then the other one should stay to cover with this defending all times player and maybe one of the central midfielders. On the flank, the central defender can overlap or even underlap the wing back. In both cases, we suddenly have a 3-4-3 formation and it's definitely an attacking one. That's why coaches like Simone Inzaghi in Lazio prefer to use, at least on one side of the central defense, an original fullback who can be effective when bursting onto the wing in attack. Time for examples, all from Italy. I mentioned Lazio. Inzaghi very often picks a player like Patrick in central defense. And I know that's not a popular choice for Lazio Tifosi, but I think you've got the point why the coach trusts him and the Bianco Celesti are the perfect example for a team with a three-man defense which has its problems with conceding goals because Lazio is focusing on attack with pressing and quick counters and when the team is trailing, like in recent games against Inter and Bayern at the Olimpico Inzaghi even put midfielders like Adam Marusic and Marco Parolo in the three-man defense urging both side centre-backs to attack on the wings 
Well, the three-man defense was forgotten for quite a long time, when the 4-4-2, 4-3-3 or even 4-2-3-1 started making its way into football. But in the last 10 years, we have seen another turnaround. One of the modern-day pioneers, Walter Mazzari, whose great Napoli team played with such a fierce tempo and energy between 2009 and 2013. But the main guys for the jury were the wingbacks, with their unlimited energy sprinting up and down the flanks like the teams of Antonio Conte. His three defenders are keeping a short distance between them, and rarely one of them dares to sprint down the flank. Right now, in Inter, Conte requires a creative spark from guys like Hakimi, Perisic, Darmian or Ashley Young, but also a determined play in defense. And then Atalanta. La Dea, with the hiring of Giampiero Gasperini in 2016, Atalanta impressed everybody with the engagement from Rafael Toloi in attack, after that many teams copied that approach. And finally, Juventus, which under Andrea Pirlo often plays with a four-man defense when defending in the matches, but when the team is building an attack, one of the fullbacks stays in the middle for a three-man defense and with on the flanks. I must admit that I'm a big fan of the three-man defense, but only if it's useful with the right players and that's not the case for every team. What's your opinion? Would you like to see your team playing with three at the back? And do you think that ideas from the past can be successful nowadays in football? I'm waiting for your views in the comments. But before that, please leave a like, share the video and maybe subscribe to the channel. So much more is coming. See you next time in Board the Game.